Hi everyone, welcome to another Journalist Toolbox training. I'm Mike Riley, the founder and editor of the Journalist Toolbox. Uh, and today is the second part of our ongoing productivity tools uh, training. We're gonna show you some neat little uh, easy to use uh, tools that'll make your life a lot easier. Um, I've got them all listed on this uh, Google Doc here. Uh, they will also be listed, the links, in the description uh, right underneath this video. So you can just open up all the links there and have access to the tools. All these tools are free. There are some paid models to them that I'll talk about, uh, but the free versions work just fine for you. Uh, you can find productivity tools at journalisttoolbox.org. We typically feature them out on the homepage, right, like right here. You often find them too in the recent updates section. You can search for productivity here, uh, or you'll find the productivity tools in this little pull down menu under uh, digital journalism right here. Right here. Um, so many different ways to find these tools. Um, uh, a complete page full of uh, productivity resources. Uh, we have our recent updates up here. Uh, and then tools and training videos, including this one, uh, are up here. This is part one of our uh, productivity tools training uh, that you can find on our uh, YouTube channel as well. Access to our YouTube channel is in the upper right-hand corner up here under training videos. Uh, we also have a newsletter that appears twice a month uh, that uh, you can link to right here. Uh, read the newsletter, see if you like it, and then subscribe to it. Uh, you can opt out at any time. So let's get started with the tools. I just want to show you a couple of hacks uh, early on. Uh, and I'm going to show you how to set up a Google Doc and a Google Sheet without having to go into Google Drive and do it. Um, the shortcut is to type in docs.new or sheets.new in your browser window. So I'll just go up here and let's say I want a Google Sheet. I just type in sheets.new, hit return, and my sheet will load. Uh, and it will default to your Google Drive. So if you happen to click out of it, um, you can it'll default there. Uh, but the other good thing about this is, you know, I, I, the way I typically do it, if I do sheets.new, uh, name it, uh, and then you could go in and just go to file, make a copy or download, or uh, in this case, I would just move it uh, to whatever folder uh, I wanted to. So sheets.new or docs.new uh, will open up a sheet for you on the fly, which is a nice uh, little little feature uh, about Google that a lot of people don't know about. Um, it's a good little shortcut. So our other tools here are some alternatives to Google Sheets and to Google uh, Docs. Um, one of them is Etherpad and video.etherpad. Um, Etherpad's a free tool. Um, you can open it up. Um, and you can just create a new pad. It's good for collaboration, um, uh, and you, or you can give it a name right here. I'll just hit new pad here. And it gives you some little instructions up here, but you know. And with each contributor to this, they'll get a different color for their contributions. So you can uh, see multiple people working on the same doc. Um, it's got your basic, uh, you know, Microsoft Word uh, uh, tools up here. You know, boldface, underline, uh, strike through, and so on. Uh, you know, you can uh, numeral bullet points. Uh, you can indent things. Um, you know, it's got a couple undo buttons. If you want to get rid of your highlights uh, in here, uh, if you don't want to have that appear anymore, uh, you know, just highlight your area and hit. The eyeball button and it takes out all your highlights but usually you want to leave them in when you're working on a collaborative document so you can see who's contributing what it's kind of like the notes section uh, that you see in google docs um, there's some other tools over here uh, you can uh, import and export uh, documents uh, time slider is kind of cool uh, you can go back and look back at the history of the document uh, and see who made uh, changes when uh, and at what times so you can look back at previous versions of it. You can see all the edits and changes I made here. And you know, as you make more changes, you can uh, you know, obviously see uh, the document grow, uh, especially as you're adding multimedia or anything like that to it. You know, it's fun sometimes too to hit the play button. You can kind of see the the document grow there, um, uh, which is really cool. Um, you can always go up and, and uh, make any edits you want to it, uh, and it will save uh, that version. 
uh, for you. Um, you can always download it uh, as, as well. So it's kind of cool. Um, you can uh, look through it. Um, you can export. Um, you can export to Etherpad, HTML. You can take and actually embed this into a page if you wanted to have a working document uh, embedded into a web page somewhere. Or you can export it um, as, you know, as a plain text file uh, and then have it downloaded to your page. Um, Etherpad video, video.etherpad, uh, is another great tool. That's the Etherpad web page. Um, it does have uh, some uh, paid versions to, to this, but you know the, the free version works really, really well. Um, and this goes over uh, all of the, the details on it. You can download this as well. Um, I like the web-based version uh, that works off their Wikimedia page, uh, which is really cool. Um, this is video.etherpad.com. Um, and this one's kind of cool because it allows you uh, to uh, narrate as you're, as you're editing. So uh, a little different interface here, um, but there's my video up there. It'll pick up my audio as well. You can shut your mic off or you know, disable the video at any time. But let's say you know, I was uh, writing something here and, and wanted to kind of narrate uh, what I was doing as I went along. Um, I, I could, you know, uh, this just auto records once you open it up. Uh, and then uh, all you do at, at the end is hit the, that share button. And again, it gives you a link, it gives you an iframe embed code in case you need to Im embed it somewhere. Uh, you can turn it on to read only too if you don't want people, you know, jumping into the web page and typing uh, on your masterpiece. Uh, you know, your title's right up here in the upper left. Um, you can title it at the beginning too. Um, or you can just uh, hit the pencil here and, and uh, uh, add in uh, what you want to add. Um, but again, this gives it a little different layer. Uh, you, know, you can sit here and narrate uh, the piece and, and uh, you appear in it uh, as you're talking. Maybe you're walking somebody through a document or some, something. Um, I often have to do that with students, you know, as we're uh, talking about uh, the process for uh, building something or, uh, you know, a tutorial on something. Uh, you can make the uh, 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 video window a little bigger if you like, or back to smaller. Um, just depends if you want the document to shine a little bit more. Um, it's uh, got all the same tools that you saw in the regular Etherpad. Uh, they're in a little different spot on the page, you know, the center and all this stuff. But if you look over here on the right, uh, the tools are pretty much the same. You can also go under settings and uh, you know, uh, turn on or off any of these. You know, if you know, only want to have audio at the start, uh, that type of thing. Uh, you can adjust your fonts and all that kind of stuff. So uh, you can even adjust the authorship color, which is really cool. Good for collaborative documents. You know, a lot of us work off of Google Docs, uh, but Etherpad's just got this little different layer to it with the video, video.etherpad.com. Really cool little tool. A couple other uh, fun tools. Uh, if you need to do some sketching um, and work some through something together, are sketchtogether.com or whiteboardfox.com. Both are uh, uh, free tools. Uh, there are some uh, paid versions of them now uh, that you can have. There's a little training video out here too you can play through, but this is pretty WYSIWYG. You can uh, figure out how to use it. Uh, it's got all your typical sketch. You know, if you use an iPad and use a lot of sketch pads, you know, you've got a pencil and you can choose the different colors, um, you know, and, and uh, uh, I can, you know, draw here. And then you can add type and call this data, hit return. And you can click out of it and go back to your other drawing tools. You can do draw different things on here, different shapes. Uh, it gives you, you know, rectangles, you know. You need to draw something a little more crisp than the ugly circle I uh, 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 drew here. Um, you know, and we need to add something like graphic and then I need to draw a line it's got things you know arrows and, and other things uh, as well that you can add here um, but you know I'll draw my own little squiggly arrow here um, but again good for collaborative if you're just sketching something out a concept or something like that um, you can add that in um, you can invite others uh, here you can uh, also do it uh, and share it on slack which is a, a great little feature um, and uh, all kinds of little ads, you know, you've got undo over here, uh, you know, selectors, so if I needed to move something around, you know, if I needed to move my box around or something, you know, I can select and, and pull. Um, uh, it'll allow you to adjust sizes and all kinds of different things. So, um, again, um, uh, 
sketchtogether.com and whiteboard dot, whiteboardfox.com uh, are really good for concepting and, and drawing. They've got little training videos in them, but really it's it's pretty WYSIWYG if you've ever used one maybe on a tablet before. Um, so those are uh, some of the big uh, file sharing uh, collabor collaboration tools I wanted to talk about. I also wanted to mention, uh, and I talked about this in our last productivity video, uh, uh, sharing large files like WeTransfer and uh, KeepVid and things like that. Um, another good one is SendSpace, uh, SendSpace.com. Uh, you can just drag a large file in there uh, or hit browse and upload it. Um, and you can uh, share this, you can email your video or whatever to someone right through your browser. I mean, I know sometimes people like to drop stuff into Google Drive or send stuff uh, uh, over email, but sometimes, you know, your files are really big and you can't do that. Um, when you, with WeTransfer and SendSpace and tools like that, uh, you're able to upload those pretty quickly. One last tool I wanted to show you guys is TrendsMap.com. It allows you to uh, locate popular hashtags around the world. It does have a paid version and a free version to it. Um, it it's great because you can just open up the map and, and look at it and see, you know, uh, you can even look back the, the previous seven days in the free version. Um, it does have a registration for this as well. Uh, there's uh, pricing on it. Um, you get one week free trial. But you can also take this tool and, uh, and just use it uh, for a little while. Uh, it does have some free features to it. Um, but TrendsMap is good if you're looking for maybe the top 10, um, uh, top 10 hashtags in Chicago, Illinois. Uh, and as you see over here, it's got uh, a little explainer with it, which you can get rid of real quick. Um, it's got a registration up here. But like I say, the free version, you know, is, is, is pretty darn good. Um, you know, Chicago, Illinois, United States. And you can go in and see a much more detailed. Here's the top tweets in Chicago. Uh, here's what's trending. Um, and I can uh, adjust all these little uh, settings here. If I only wanted hashtags, I could get rid of detail users or words. Um, and you can really see what's trending uh, very, very, very quickly uh, in your community and another city, maybe, uh, you know, what people are sharing uh, and, and tweeting about. Um, again, there are many. Uh, Twitter hashtag search tools. TrendsMap's been around for a while. It's, it's one of my favorites. So um, again, uh, journalsttoolbox.org. Uh, you can find all kinds of uh, helpful tools and resources, you know, for covering the election, COVID-19 protests, uh, you know, weather, podcasting, data journalism, all kinds of fun stuff out there. Um, so do take advantage of that uh, website and all the tools available there. Um, and we'll see you next time for part three of our uh, productivity tools training session.